Why? Because you got purpose. You have not because you ask not. The Bible will make a very, very deep impression in my life. I had the Bible sitting there in my house. I had the Bible given to me multiple times in the military. Just because I received it, I didn't treasure it. But once I treasured wisdom and knowledge and understanding, boom, it was all right there. So there is a difference between being faith-based and being a faith-based millionaire. There is a difference between the have and the have-nots. There is a difference between those who are blessed and those who are a blessing. What? Let me break down and unpack the 10 signs that you'll become a faith-based millionaire in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Apollo here. Healing to you from the first ever episode here at the new Money Smart Home. Home of the Seven Figure Squad. Temporary studio based out of our house here in Dallas, Texas. That is correct. We have officially relocated from Chicago, Illinois, down now to Dallas, Texas. So yes, we are officially Texans. And uh, I'm excited about this state. I'm excited about the new opportunities and windows of opportunities we have here. But uh, I'm excited for you because you have the opportunity to help us bless a nonprofit church or charity once we get to 150,000 subs, that's the next mark here for the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel. Because once we get to 150,000 subs, we are going to award a church, charity, or nonprofit that we will crowdsource and nominate to receive a check from us to that nonprofit, church, or charity in the amount of $5,000 once we hit 150,000 subs. So please, could you help us give a check out to this church, charity, or nonprofit? Once we hit 150,000 subs, so please, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and make sure you hit notifications. Be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. And please share these videos with those that you love and care about. Okay, so what are the signs? What are the signs that you will become a first generation cash flow, faith based millionaire? You may have seen a lot of our videos. We ask a lot of questions. Why? R why? What are the reasons? What are the reasons? So let's, let's unpack that real quick. So what do you want? We we're always asking all the time. What do you want? It sounds like a episode for notebook, right? What do you want? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> but listen, if you don't know what you want, how can God bless you? If you just are going through the motions and you're not clear about your prayer life with him and asking, Lord, can you bless me in these key areas? specifically based on what you want in my life because I desire this too as well. And if it pleases you, please bless me with the opportunities and please bless me with the skills and ability. And therefore he can send you in a direction. But if you don't know what you want, well, how can you become a first generation cash flow faith-based millionaire? So it's number one. And number two, why do you want it? Is it just selfish? What are the reasons? Is it because there's a huge blessing? But once you reach this point, they can cut a check or you can be able to be a blessing to other people in this uh, this area this community the community center you want to develop a ministry that you want to lead a business you want to fund in finance what is it why do you want it so number one what do you want number two why do you want it and number three boom how bad do you want it how bad do you want it? i can't tell you how many times we've run across people say oh yeah I love to be financially free. Oh yeah, I love to be a manager. Oh yeah, I love to be debt free. Oh yeah, I love to cut a check to this nonprofit church. I just love to give. I love to give. I want to help a lot of people. But listen, you can't help a lot of people because you can't give what you don't have. So when we're talking about resources, so if I was going to ask that question here, what's the purpose of the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel? What do I want for this channel? What? Do you, what are we willing to do? Well, listen, I got three things here I just want to share with you from my heart that if you don't know, maybe now you know, is number one, I want to provide peace of finances to people. Do you know why? Because I'll tell you this, once you're able to pay your bills, once you're able to master your finances, once you're able to start reducing the financial leaks in your budget and start increasing the income that's coming your way, and you're able to financially elevate about a lot of situations. Listen, the saying is, I've never heard a pastor that ever turned down a donation, okay? I've never heard a ministry leader or a nonprofit organization turn down a donation. Do you know why? Because money is important to fund and finance and spread that cause. So number one, if I wanna help you become a first generation cash flow faith-based millionaire, I would love for you to have peace. Why? Let's get money out of the situation so therefore the variables of your life can now be exposed, so therefore you can help improve or increase or add to those variables. And once we remove out money, then therefore we can get to the real cause and the heart of the matter. So when you are debt free, when you have cash flow mastered, when you got income coming in, 
We got investments coming out. You got portfolio and passive income coming in. All these things are starting to come your way. So, wow, I'm not worried about my bills. Therefore, you don't have anxiety. You don't have anxiousness. You don't have all these different things coming at you. You don't have collectors coming your way that you can pursue. Then number two, which is pursue your purpose. Pursue your purpose. That it gets you out of bed every morning. You're excited about each day. It's, you know, how many times have you gone to the job and people say, hey, man, how's your day? People ask you, how's your day? You say, hey, same old, same old. Another day, another dollar. Do you know why you say those things? Because there's no purpose behind what you do. And therefore, you're cynical about it. You're not excited. You're not fired up. When people ask you, how you doing? Dude, I'm jacked. Dude, I'm so fired up by the situation. The person that we're building, the, the, the building that we're investing in, the business that we're launching, I am so fired up by this project. Why? Because you got purpose. You've raised the level of your finances, your increase, so therefore, you can elevate above a lot of problems that will naturally go on in your life. So number, no, number three, transition to number three, so therefore, you can pursue the things that God has in store for you. So therefore, you have the financial resources to pursue that you're not held back. So, oh man, I love to do this, man, but my job, I'm held back more because, you know, I've really got to sell this client. You're not in control. You're not pursuing what God has in store for you inside your heart. You're limited because, oh man, I can't really do it because I'm boxing this corner financially speaking. So it's the main purpose behind the Sin for Your Squad YouTube channel because I want you to start thinking like a millionaire so therefore you can strategize like a millionaire so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow. Millionaire, and the Bible has some very interesting things here about what is said about the value of wisdom, which are obvious signs when I read Proverbs chapter 2. Now, the reference Bible I'm using is John Maxwell's Leadership Bible. I love this Bible. I'm a huge fan of John Maxwell. I think I've got a whole bookshelf here of all of his books. One of my favorite ones is his Leadership Bible here because he actually breaks down a Bible study, how he unpacks Scripture and many of you may or may not know this, but I am just in love with the life of King Solomon. I'm in love with Proverbs and Ecclesiastes because it allows me to have a Bible-based perspective about money, finance, success, wealth, prosperity, all based in the Bible. Because here's the thing, I can't go based on man's laws or today's laws or the current laws because those laws haven't stood the test of time. So when I read the Bible, and I say, okay, I want to be a millionaire and I just want to be a millionaire for one year or two years or 10 years or 20 years. I want to be a millionaire, multimillionaire, decamillionaire, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth, because there's a greater purpose that I have in my life at many different levels to this game. There's levels to this game where you're making $1,000 extra a month. There's levels to this game where you're making $50,000 a year. There's levels to this game where you're making $100,000 a year. There's levels to this game where you're making half a million dollars a year. There's levels to this game where you make a million dollars a year, so on and so forth. That each level, there's always something else. There's some elements that we need to eliminate there, so therefore you can have peace, you can have purpose, and therefore you can pursue the thing that God has placed in your heart. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 2 here, and what King Solomon is talking about really is the value of wisdom. So let's look at the first verse here. Let's unpack this first verse. It reads like this. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, that's a sign. That's a sign that if you receive God's words and you treasure his words, how many times have you you guys taking a class. Yeah, 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 I hear you, I hear you. You fall asleep in class. You're not really receiving, nor are you really treasuring. But uh, one time I was in church, and this is when the old Blackberries were out, and I had a Blackberry, or it was at a Sony Trio. Okay, are you probably getting the comments right now. You're probably judging me right now. This, the guy's old, yeah. So I had an old Sony Trio and a Blackberry, and I was uh, typing in it during church service. And they're like, hey, hey, what are you doing? I said, what? Put your phone down. What? Hey, you're in, that's disrespectful. So what are you talking about? And I show them my Sony Trio. I'm taking notes. <laughs> I'm not texting nobody. I'm not messing around my phone. I'm not on the internet. I'm taking notes. You know, other people take notes with uh, you know, pen and paper, but I was taking notes in my phone so that I can email it to so I can start ca having a catalog of things that I'm learning in church because I wanted to receive and treasure God's words when it came to money, wealth, prosperity, living my life. So the question you got to ask yourself is, are you there to receive? Is your hand closed or is your hand open? And when you receive, do you treasure it? Or is it just like Christmas present when you're a kid and the toys seven days later just hanging around the house, your mom and dad are yelling at you because you're not putting away the toy that they gave you. Yeah, you received it, but you didn't treasure it. So when you're looking at God's word when it comes to money, finance, prosperity, wealth, and success, and living your life, are you receiving it? Are you open to receive or... Do you know everything about everything? 
I'm very transparent when I've said this in my previous videos when I say I spent my 30s repaying the mistakes of my 20s. Do you know why? Because in my 20s, I thought I knew everything. When I was 22, 23, 24, 25 years old, just come out the Marine Corps, you know, the, the Marine Corps really pumped me up with a lot of experience, a lot of leadership development. I said, yeah, I'm a sergeant in the Marines. I know everything, man. I didn't realize, man, I'm just starting the beginning of my life. Because you know, I, did, I didn't have, I knew a lot, which is knowledge, but you know what I didn't have? I didn't have a lot of experience. Now, the Marine Corps put a lot of experience in my life from the ages of 17 to 25 years old because I was deployed in uh, two different areas of the world, the Middle East and Somalia, Africa, and uh, served on uh, three different uh, naval ships and the uh, 15th Mew and uh, the 31st Mew in uh, Okinawa, Japan. But I didn't have a lot of experience. I had a lot of knowledge, but not a lot of experience. I remember being at 22, 23, 24 years old, I always laugh at folks that are in their young 20s and, and I ask them, I ask them all the time, hey, uh, if I told you somebody was 28 years old, do you think that they're old? And they're like, yeah, that's old. <laughs> what happens if they're 30? Oh yeah, they're really old. And uh, I used to think that way. When I was t in my young 20s, I used to think they had people in their 28, 30 years old were old. But come to find out by the time I blinked once and twice, being a single father, running a business, launching a business at 23, 24, 25 years old, I blinked a couple of times, but kids are now six, seven years old. And I'm now eight years into my new business. And I'm realizing to myself, my goodness, I still don't know a lot. By the way, before I go into the second sign, if you affirm that you're going to receive and treasure God's word, put it in the comment section below, put it, I am receiving and treasuring God's word. Put it in the comment section below if that's what you agree with and what you are affirming. Number two, a second sign here is that you're inclining your ear. Let's, let's read here in verse number two so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Think about this real quick. What does incline your ear? Have you ever heard somebody, what would you say, what do you say, what are you doing? You're inclining your ear. You're leaning forward, you're inclining your ear versus declining. Because the opposite of incline is to decline. Yeah, I got it, man, I got it, I'm good, I'm, I'm totally chill, blah, 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 blah. But if you're inclining your ear, you know, oftentimes I, I, I'm around conferences and I'm around a lot of people that want to learn about money and finance and business. I'm always looking around to see who's inclining their ear in a circle format, whether we're talking at the side of the stage, or we have our meetings after the meetings, or we're just in group huddles. I'm watching to he incline, who's inclining their ear to wisdom and understanding because experience times knowledge equals wisdom. And is somebody inclining their ear? Well, that's a sign. So not only they're receiving, they're treasuring, but I say, yo, oh, let me learn more. What would you do in this situation? How would you process this issue? What should I look out for? I'm inclining my ear to wisdom. That somebody has an ear for leadership. And oftentimes everybody wants to wear the crown, but many times in leadership, you also got to first carry the crown. And oftentimes a lot of people don't want to carry the crown because they want to wear it right away. And somebody was asking me, hey, what do I do about my brand? My brand, my brand, my bro, what does your brand stand for? Have you made anything? Have you helped anybody? Start building business momentum, build some sales, build a track record, build a reputation. And along the way, your brand will naturally and organically start to grow and manifest itself as you do it. So don't worry about the pretty logo and the pretty website and all these things are all pretty, but you haven't really accomplished much. You put the cart too much in front of the horse. I get branding is important. Having a logo is important, but not right away. By the way, just listen to that. You would save yourself $50,000. Why? Because I spent $50,000 on marketing, branding, guidance, advice for consultants and coaches. And next thing you know, I have a bunch of brochures, letterhead and folders that I never used, CDs and DVDs that I never used. Why? Because everybody flipped to the social media. Everybody flipped to email. Nobody wanted a folder for me to hand them to them and, and so they're gonna go home and throw it away anyway. So are you inclining your ear to wisdom? That is a sign that you will become, potentially become a first generation cash flow faith-based millionaire. Number three, let's read here in Proverbs chapter two, verse three, it reads like this. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, check that out. If you cry out, hey, hey let me process this issue. Should I be hanging around this person? Should I consider this consultant? Should I consider this line of work? Should I consider this potential investment for my financial future? Should I invest in this business? Should I invest my time in this endeavor? Are you crying out 
for wisdom. Are you asking? Are you like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to learn anyway. So are you going to learn the easy way, God's way, or are you going to learn the hard way? Listen, I've learned many, many, many years of my life, my entire 20s, in fact, I've learned the hard way. So if you're watching this right now, I want you to affirm in the comment section below, I will learn the smart way, or I will learn God's way, not my way. Because listen, one of the things that we have all the time is a battle between our way and God's way. And oftentimes, when it's been my way, my way, my way, sure, temporarily I got to win, temporarily I got a success, but ultimately God's going to say, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to mess with you a little bit. But ultimately, I know you are going to cry out for me when everything that you pursued fell, and now you're waiting for me. Are you going to cry out sooner or are you going to cry out later? Because pretty soon, hopefully, you learn how to cry out, or the same old, same old is going to happen to your life. You next you know you have a one breakup, two breakup, three breakup, one failure, second failure, third failure, and it's all the same failure. You've established a pattern for yourself, and it's not good. You want to establish a pattern of behavior that is bearing new fruit, that people are exceeding, that people are excelling, that people are happy and prosperous around you, or are they not? So are you crying out for wisdom? So let's go into number five. So cry out and lift up. Maybe speak up is another way, way to say it. Speak up, say something. Are you crying out? Help, am I lifting up my voice? Listen, what's that saying? You have not because you ask not. Many times people say, I'm crying out, crying and crying, I'm lifting up my voice. Or am I not really lifting up my voice? I think I'm heard, but I'm not really heard. Am I sure I am being heard? You know, Stephen Covey once said in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, seek to understand, then be understood. Sure, listen, take it all in. Understand somebody else's perspective. Understand your own perspective, boom, and then seek to be understood what your angle is, what your pursuit is, what your peace and purpose is all about. Which leads us to the number six, seek and search. Let's go to Proverbs chapter two, verse four. It reads like this. If you seek her as silver and search for her for hidden treasures. <laughs> Remember the time that uh, you had a, maybe an Easter egg hunt or something like that, or a treasure hunt? how people felt, uh, or for some of you had family members, maybe even yourself, your pursuit of becoming wealthy was a lottery ticket. How did you pursue scratching off that? Were you going after it? Were you seeking it? Were you searching? Of course you were, temporarily. But when you're looking to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, not just for one year, not for two years, not for 10 years, but for the multiple, multiple generations, are you seeking and searching like silver? Are you seeking and searching because you, man, I want to master this because this is going to pay off. And by the way, what's the Bible saying? There's nothing wrong with seeking after silver. There's nothing wrong with seeking riches. There's nothing wrong with seeking and understanding that money can be a great tool for you to manifest what God's purpose is for you in your life. Think about this real quick. Some of you guys have watched, you know, Aladdin, and Aladdin rubbed the side of the genie bottle, and boom, this genie was saying, hey, yeah, three witches, boom, 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 boom. And how did Prince Ali feel when he was marching in when you saw the movie Aladdin? I mean, how do you feel coming in, wanting to groom Jasmine, wanting to woo her, say, listen, I want you to look at me. He was seeking her. He was pursuing her. How many times have you, uh, uh, remember in high school when you had your first love, right? You're seeking to ask her out for homecoming. You're seeking uh, her out or him out for a uh, uh, prom, whatever the case may be. What did that feel like? Well, are you doing the same thing too with finances, your money, your, 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 your business, are you crying out? Are you seeking and searching for information, wisdom, to help you get to the next level? Which leads me to our next point here, number seven. Wisdom and knowledge is discussed here in Proverbs chapter two, verse 10. It reads like this. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Let me stop there real quick. Ask yourself this. Is wisdom coming in? Is knowledge coming in? Or are you just too haphazard about it? There's been plenty of times in my career, my, my times with my own personal investments, my own desire for success, my own desire for ambition, too much winging it because I wasn't seeking wisdom. I wasn't seeking knowledge. I tell you this, when I uh, first picked up a book called Missed Fortune 101 because I knew I needed to connect the dots. I didn't know how to connect the dots. I sought out my first mentor in 2005 and man, it cost me $8,000 for a three-day seminar 
But this financial expert, this insurance expert, this financial strategist, boom, connected the dots for me because I was seeking wisdom. And lo and behold, I never thought in a million years that when I sought out that financial expert, when I saw the things they taught me about insurance and mortgage and real estate, he also planted a seed in me about the benefits of why entrepreneurship should be something that I need to pursue. I need to pursue understanding how I can be very influential as an entrepreneur. He also gave me wisdom and understanding of how the Bible will make a very, very deep impression in my life. Why? Because he exposed to me Matthew 25. Which, by the way, check out this episode right here, which is the Bible story that made me millions. It was a parable of the talents. He planted a seed in me with his work and his book and his mentoring that I sought out Matthew 25. I sought out many different scriptures in the Bible that he referenced. I'm like, no, I can't see the Bible talking about money. And next thing you know, there it was. You know why? Because for many, many years, I was not seeking wisdom. I was not receiving information. I was not treasuring it. I had a Bible sitting there in my house. I had the Bible given to me multiple times in the military. Just because I received it, I didn't treasure it. But once I treasured wisdom and knowledge and understanding, boom, it was all right there. And maybe some of you are getting that right now watching these videos. Maybe some of you are getting that right now as a subscriber to our YouTube channel that you are seeing now what the Bible says about money, not what religion says about money, but you're seeing for yourself. And by the way, don't wait on me to inform you. Don't depend only on me to inform or your pastor or your mentors. Seek for yourself. Make sure you're out there gaining your own wisdom and knowledge and perspective of how the living word is speaking to you. Which leads me to the eighth sign, which is discretion and understanding because 10 and 11 go hand in hand. Let me read 10 and 11 together now. So when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. Listen, how many times have you seen the movie said, listen, viewer discretion advised, right? Because you got to be careful then of what you're seeing because what you see, sometimes what you see you can't take away. Well, same thing here with discretion. With discretion, are you sure you want to see this problem? So therefore, you see this problem ahead of time, you can avoid this problem. Or you see a solution with discretion, then you can take advantage of the solution and avoiding a lot of headache. It works both ways. Which leads me to the ninth sign, which is deliver. Let's discuss this here when I read Proverbs chapter 2, verse 12 and 16. It reads like this. To deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things. Let me go to 16. To deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words. Woo! Listen. And by the way, it happens both ways. Both male and female. Husband and wife. Boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever you want to call it. When you're looking at this and you're seeking these signs of being able to seek wisdom and understanding, the sign is that, you know what? Here's a sign that I'm going to deliver myself away from this madness. I'm going to put myself in a position of success. I am delivered from perverse things. How many times have you seen it? I mean, lately in the, in, in, in the news. How many perverse things have you seen out there? Like, and you, you, uh, many of you want to be open-minded. Say, hey, let me hear from an open mind here what they have to say about it. But boy, man, is that perverse? It goes against the values and principles that I've read and understood. And I embrace, hmm. Maybe I need to avoid this. Maybe with the understanding of the word that I'm grounded on, I'm delivered away from this madness. And my friends, that is a very, very good sign by understanding and turning into it and listening to that, that you might become a faith-based millionaire. Let's point out, last but not least, sign number 10. Walk upright and dwell. What am I talking about? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 20. It reads like this. So it may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness. Let me continue here to 21. For the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. Let me continue reading on in 22. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. Okay, here's a great sign. Here's the crazy part though. How many times have we seen bad people sticking around for a minute? Okay, so they might have their short-term win. They might have their short-term victory. But what happens? Scripture says here, you will be able to walk upright. The people that don't make their money upright, here's what they're doing. Boom, boom, boom. What am I doing? I'm always watching my back, looking over my shoulder. Listen, if the sign is that you will walk upright and dwell, that means your pillow is soft every night. 
that you don't have to worry about the things that you did yesterday, the words that you said, the promises that you made, the things that you inflicted upon. You don't have to worry about those things. Why? Because the righteous that speaks with wisdom and understanding is always going to be walking upright. When you walk into a room, you can either walk into a room or you can enter a room. And people know that you've just entered a room. And the scripture says here, you will dwell, not be removed from it. If you don't, if, in other words, if you're not dwelling, you're not in it. So if you're following these words, if you're following God's guidance, and I encourage you to read the scriptures yourself, Proverbs, all of Proverbs chapter 2, you will be able to dwell in this earth with peace, happiness, joy, purpose, and pursuing what God has placed on your heart, and why you should become a first-generation cash flow, faith-based millionaire. So as I wrap it up, here are the 10 signs again from the top. Receive, treasure, incline, apply, cry out, lift up, seek, search, wisdom, knowledge, discretion, and understanding, deliverance, and walking upright and dwelling. So I wanna encourage you on your walk and your journey here with finances, with your business, with your pursuit, of what you feel as God has placed inside your heart. I wanna know your thoughts, your comments, your feedback. Put it in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you're thinking. And again, as a reminder, our goal is to get to 150,000 subs, so therefore we can cut a check of $5,000 to a church, charity, or nonprofit. They will crowdsource together, and we'll give that check once we reach 150,000 subs. So before I let you go, make sure you check out this video here, How the Bible Made Me a Millionaire. And number two, the story that made me a millionaire to pursue God's word, God's way, so therefore I can not just be blessed, but it would be a blessing, which is what I hope and encourage many, many, many of you to do too as well. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications. to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys.